Don't invite them to church too soon. These were the words of Pastor Watt, our dear friend and pastor of a little Thai church that we've been attending for the past few years. Karen and I had just begun to reach out to a group of Buddhist teenagers living in a house just behind us. Some kind of an orphanage or children's home. We didn't know exactly what it was, but we really liked the kids. Pastor Watt continued, Church will be very strange for them. They won't get it. Just be their friends, invite them over for food, love them, play games, and just let the power of the living Word of God live out through your lives. In time, they'll be ready to hear about Jesus. Wow, that was over three years ago, and he was so right. Bring the Word does not necessarily mean bring the church. Indeed, Jesus didn't bring people to the church. He brought the word to the people. Isn't that true? Wherever they were in their broken lives and, and people were transformed. God's word is amazing. It's so very cool to be part of someone's life who is touching, who is tasting, who's encountering the living word of God for the first time in their lives. I want to take this time to, to tell you about Alex and Katie, two of these beautiful young teens who have literally become like a son and a daughter to us here in Thailand. As far as we know, all the kids in the children's home were essentially non-status foreigners coming to Thailand as young kids from a neighboring country in crises. After growing up in a Buddhist temple from about eight years old to 15 years old, Alex was the iconic novice monk wearing the saffron robes, going out barefoot in the early mornings and to collect alms. Katie ended up in the same temple, in the same school at around 11 years old, I think, as the first and only girl. Her mom had sent her there because she simply didn't have the resources to send her to a good government school. I'll never forget the first day we met Alex. It was about two weeks after we moved into our new house and he wandered up and down the lane beside our house until finally I noticed him and went out to greet him. Today is the day we decided to meet you, he announced. I was amazed at his English. I asked him, where did you learn English like this? His response was so funny. He said, matter of factly, YouTube. Katie was 18, but she looked like she was 14. Tiny, super shy, but with this big, beautiful smile. It didn't take long to fall in love with each of these kids. They quickly became like family. And oh my, did they love to give big bear hugs. It was pretty special when they transitioned from calling us Lungpet and Papui to Papet and Mapui. Pa and Ma mean dad and mom in Thai. Karen's nickname, Pui, was given to her by an older Thai gentleman. He told her that he, she looks like Miss Universe from Thailand. Well, that's pretty cool. My name is not quite so glamorous. It's simply pet or duck. Dad duck does sound a little strange in English, but when paired with Karen's name in Thai, Popet and Mepui, it has a really nice ring to it. Well, every weekend that we could, we invited the kids over to play games, eat pizza, eat brownies, ice cream, whatever, and sing Thai worship songs. It was amazing. Every one of these kids had grown up totally immersed in the teachings of Buddhism, a worldview and philosophy completely and utterly void of any concept of a creator God. They had barely even heard about Jesus, and yet these kids loved to belt out Thai and English worship songs that I was learning on the guitar. I am a lady. I am Nadi. Yes. I am Rupert Kap. I am Katie. I am Mary. <laughs> okay. And we are learning the song, uh, No Longer Slaves, and we would like to sing it for you. So here we go.
It was, it was like church. Actually, better than some churches that I've been to. Everybody joined in. We went out and bought a box drum and made all sorts of percussion shakers and noisemakers. Honestly, it was pure joy. As our first Christmas approached in the new house, Karen was really wanting to give these kids an amazing first ever Christmas experience. She went all out. She prepared a big party, decorated the house, and prepared beautifully wrapped gifts for each of the kids. And included in each gift was a Thai English New Testament. At the time, I really didn't have enough Thai language ability to share the gospel clearly or even the Christmas story. So we invited the Wycliffe Thai director, Ajahn Tarawat, or Wat, over to share the Christmas story. I was utterly blown away. Not only did he share the Christmas story, but to help these Buddhist kids understand the context and the importance of Jesus coming to earth, he did an entire set of panorama Bible stories from Genesis to Jesus being born in Bethlehem and then finished off with Mark 4 and 5, where in four back-to-back -back stories, Jesus demonstrates his sovereign and supreme power over every major fear that Buddhist people deal with in their lives. Natural disasters and storms and evil spirits, sickness and death. At the end of more than an hour of storytelling, Pastor Watt asked the kids who, if any, would like to commit to learning more about Jesus. Every single teen in the room slipped up their hands. Well, miraculously, when I asked the Buddhist leader of the orphanage house for his blessing to continue reading the Bible and teaching these kids more about Jesus, he said, yes, they're completely free to choose the path they want to take. I just want them to be happy. I just want the best for them. And so we did just that. We taught them new worship songs, gave them Bibles and Bible audio players in their language, and took them out on outings and shared with them about the awesomeness of God. Three years later, Alex told me he wanted to go camping with me. He had never been camping on a mountain. I was so, so surprised when he pulled out from his bag his big black Thai Bible that we had given him. He clearly expected to study something new or read something while we were camping. And so after breakfast the next day, I felt compelled to share the classic Romans Road message of salvation with him from the book of Romans. Verse by verse, we went through eight key verses reading, exploring, and asking clarifying questions. At the end, I asked him, Alex, do you believe this? He replied, Gao sip gao percent, or 99.9%. .9%. That is enough, I said. Do you want to believe in Jesus and accept what he's done for you on the cross? Do you want Jesus to be your master and Lord? We bowed our heads and we prayed. Later that day when we got home, Alex told Karen with a, a twinkle in his eye, Mepui, it's my birthday today. It was so cool. We began opening our house each Wednesday evening for Alex and Katie to come over for a meal and, and then simply read a chapter of the Bible and ask questions. Well, we began in Luke 1 and began with the Christmas story right in the middle of summer. Sitting out on the deck, we opened up our Bibles, Thai style, in a small circle on the floor, we began with the stories of Mary and Elizabeth, of angels and promises, and being filled with the Holy Spirit. We would read a few verses and stop, ask questions, and then have them tell the story in their own words. Well, by the end of the first chapter, I asked, well, what did you learn about the story about Mary and Elizabeth? Alex spoke up instantly. Nothing is impossible with God. Both Mary and Elizabeth should not have been able to have babies, but they did. Katie blew me away with her answer. I like that Mary wanted to be a servant of God, she said. I want to be like Mary. I would like to be a servant of God. <laughs> and then she said, I like that even though Elizabeth did not believe at first, she did believe as she saw God fulfilling his promise. When I asked what do we learn about God, Alex piped up again first, ladies first. God came to ladies first. And then he continued, I see that God has a plan for those who love him. When I asked, what do we learn about the nature of people from this story? Katie piped up first. She said, there are more people who believe in themselves than those who believe in God. Oh my goodness, did you hear those answers? I was astounded. 
This was the first time in their lives these two had ever read the Christmas story in a language they could understand. And God literally revealed himself to them in just a matter of minutes. Unbelievable, the power of the word of God to a seeking heart. Well, with virtually no churches meeting at the time in Thailand, I was really concerned how we could connect Katie and Alex to some sort of local church fellowship. About that time, I started looking to see if there's any Alpha courses being offered online in Thailand. Alpha is a 10-week evangelistic course which introduces the basics of Christian faith through a series of talks and discussions. Well, I found one starting that very week run out of a church in Bangkok. I immediately registered and we invited Katie and Alex to come over each Friday night for dinner and then attend the Alpha meeting together. During each Alpha course, week seven is called the Holy Spirit Weekend. At the end of the teaching and discussions, the, the leader asked Katie if she would like to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And she said, yes. Oh my goodness, I've never heard a Thai person pray with such fervor and passion as when she prayed for Katie that night. Later that evening, when eating ice cream and brownies, we sent a message to Matt, another wonderful Thai Christian friend. Alex, ครับเรียนรู้อะไรครับ During the very last Alpha session the leaders asked Katie why she wanted to follow Jesus She responded พอเป็ดไม่ได้คุยถึงเรื่องพระเจ้าให้เราฟังก่อนเนี่ยwe have been so overjoyed watching Katie grow in her faith from a little shy Buddhist girl growing up in a temple to a joyful young woman eager to invite others to join her in exploring her newfound faith and hope in Jesus. Maria, another Christian Thai friend that we know through Wycliffe Thai Foundation called and invited Katie to her church's Thanksgiving celebration. As we walked her to the door, I asked her, are you nervous meeting all these new people? She said, no, I'm excited. We've been so amazed at the goodness of God in both Katie and Alex's lives. Even with no opportunity to begin attending a formal church, they're reading their Bibles, growing in their faith, and even talking to Jesus out loud in front of others and praying. Well, today, two more tiny seedlings have sprouted out of hard ground that has been tilled and watered and plowed here in Thailand for many decades. Helping Katie and Alex know God has been such a joy for Karen and me. But this comes on the shoulders of countless others giving their lives to bring the word in many different forms. Without the Bible translated into Thai and into Thai Yai, the mother tongue of these kids, there would be no way of sharing the story of Jesus in a language that they can understand. Without the foundational work of linguistics research and literacy and developing scripture teaching resources, there would be no alphabets, no books, no churches, no pastors, no Sunday school teachers, no Bible apps, no Alpha program, and no online believers groups. Praise God. All the resources are available today for Alex and Katie in their own language, but there's still more than 300 language communities in Southeast Asia with zero access to God's word in a language they can fully understand. That's why we're here. We want for millions of people in Southeast Asia what we have seen Katie and Alex receive in the past three years, new life in Jesus. Thank you for taking the time, each of you, for standing with us and supporting us in this journey. Without your undying support and encouragement, we would never have had the opportunity to live next door to these teens and share the love of Christ with them in this way. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.